Okay, so what about the other changes? Program change, or you, you called it genetic recombination. Look at what it says here. Most heritable differences are due not to mutations, but to genetic recombination. So God not only created all the animals, he also packed them with enough genetic information that would allow them to adapt to different environments and varieties we see today. So adaptation is real? Yeah, I, I saw an explanation of it in the Focus on Earth Science. Individuals with characteristics that are poorly suited to the environment are less likely to survive and reproduce. Over time, poorly suited characteristics may disappear from the species. So a population of animals can adapt by expressing variety over time, but there are limits to how much they can change. In what way? Think about rolling dice. If you had two dice, you could roll anything between 2 and 12. The variety is programmed into the dice, but you can't roll anything higher or lower. I get what you're saying. Likewise, animals can express a lot of variety, but there's a limit because of the finite genetic information they have. Exactly. And while we've seen some pretty amazing varieties within the kinds God created, like in dogs, one basic kind of animal can never change into another. And that fits with all the examples we see in these textbooks. Although they like to point out the differences in finch beaks and tortoises. It's just adaptation within the genetic limits of that kind. Right, but then they pass it off as evolution. And you know, I used to think that all these arguments really showed evolution, but then I got to thinking. Studying changes in a beak shape, like Darwin's finches, won't show you where that beak came from. And despite the minor changes, a finch is still just a finch. But the truth is what we read in Genesis 1.25. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. <laughs>